All told, by 2022, the top 15 cancer drugs are expected to collectively make almost $90 billion in sales. To put that in perspective, that represents about one-fourth of the entire U.S. pharma market in 2014. According to Quintilosimes data, it's also bigger than Pharma's haul in Japan or China that year. We have compiled a list of to 15 cancer drugs. RevLimit has been on the market for a decade, and it's been the powerhouse behind Celgene's growth since its launch. Already a mega blockbuster, the drug is the linchpin of a hematology franchise that Celgene expects to exceed $15 billion in annual sales by 2020, with RevLimit sales forecast to more than double by 2022. Optivo was the first drug in the pd one pdl one inhibitor class to reach the market after its approval in Japan in 2014, but then followed Merck and Co's Keytruda by several months in winning an FDA approval. The two drugs have seesawed for dominance ever since. Though Keytruda's new approval in first-line lung cancer could prove a spoiler for Optivo's 2022 sales, the Met has been the favorite to rule the roost among this new generation of the immuno-oncology drugs. Prospects for Optivo took a knock after it failed to meet its objectives in the Checkmate 026 trial in first-line non-small cell lung cancer, NSCLC, largely because it did not confine its study population to patients whose tumors tested positive for high-level PD-L1 expression. Since its first launch in 2013, first-in-class BTK inhibitor Imbruvica has grown quickly to cross the blockbuster sales threshold, showing that targeting rarer cancers is no impediment. The drug now leads the market in the second-line chronic lymphocytic leukemia market, backed up by use in previously treated mantle cell lymphoma and Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. Keytruda was the first pd one pdl one inhibitor to be approved for marketing in the U.S., ahead of Bristol-Myers Squibb's Opdivo, but has lagged behind its rival in sales pretty much from the get-go. That could change, given some trial results for the BMS Med last Faland that, in turn, could push Keytruda higher on this list by the time 2022 rolls around. Abrinset first in a new class of CDK, 4-6 inhibitors has romped away since Pfizer launched it in the U.S. in February 2015 as a combination therapy with letrozole for hormone receptor positive, HR+, human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 negative, HER2, breast cancer that is spread to another part of the body. Roxdecentric took third place in the pd one slash pdl one inhibitor race, reaching the market more than a year behind Opdivo and Keytruda, but it got off to a strong start and looks set to gain ground quickly. Sales reached $19 million in just a few weeks on the market in the U.S. for bladder cancer, and it has since nabbed a new indication in lung cancer. When Johnson & Johnson launched its multiple myeloma drug Darzalex in 2015, it knew it had its work cut out to carve out market share. Its drug was reserved for fourth-line use, setting it behind its closest competitors, Celgene's Pomalist, Pomalidomide, and Amgen's Kyprolis, Carfilzomib, in the treatment sequence. That wasn't a disaster, as multiple myeloma patients generally go through multiple treatment rounds to try to keep their cancer at bay, and J&J &J has already started to move the drug to earlier use. When Roxperjeta first launched in 2012, the jury was out as to whether the med would grow quickly enough to compensate for the expected decline in its $7 billion a year stablemate Herceptin once biosimilar competition gathered pace. Four years later, those doubts have been largely laid to rest. Progetta is one of the fastest-growing new products in Rock's portfolio, thanks to approvals for use in early-stage HER2 positive breast cancer that expand its initial use in more advanced disease. In fact, by 2022, Progetta is predicted to add $32 billion to its annual sales, more than offsetting an expected $28 billion decline for Herceptin. Eyebrows were raised when Pfizer offered $14 billion to buy Medivation last year to get control of fast-growing prostate cancer drug Standy, which was sold by Astellas. With that deal done, Pfizer has a stake in a drug that is growing at an impressive lick despite staunch competition from Johnson & Johnson's incumbent blockbuster Zitiga, Abiraterone. Zitiga outsold Standy last year just barely with sales above $22 billion, but Standy has a few advantages that are helping it compete against its rival, 
Firstly, it is given as a monotherapy, while Zitiga needs to be dosed alongside the steroid prednisone to balance side effects. Generally, doctors like to avoid use of steroids if at all possible. Secondly, patients on Zitiga need regular monitoring for liver enzyme levels, and the FDA required stronger warnings of potential liver toxicity to be added to the drugs label in June. Avastin has been the gift that just keeps on giving for Roch. The VEGF targeting antibody claimed its first approval in colorectal cancer in 2004 and has steadily added new indications since then, most recently picking up a European approval for use alongside Tarseva for patients with EGFR positive non small cell lung cancer. Approximately 15% to 20% of all breast cancer patients have tumors that are HER2 positive, which tend to grow more quickly than those that are HER2 negative. Until 1998, the prospects for patients with this form of cancer were pretty bleak, but the launch of ROX Herceptin in that year revolutionized the way these patients were treated. The drug was ROX's first targeted cancer drug, and it has dominated the HER2 positive market ever since, with market share still well above 90%. Rocky is relying on Gaziva to defend its position in the treatment of several blood cancers when big-selling rituxin begins to face competition from biosimilars, possibly as early as 2017. The drug is billed as a new and improved version of rituxin. With the same anti-CD20 mechanism of action, like its parent, it is being developed for an array of B-cell malignancies. Jacafe's inclusion in the top 15 list may be something of a surprise, given the news last year that Insight was pulling the plug on the drug for solid tumors after two failed trials in prostate and colorectal cancer. Evaluate Pharma's data suggests there is still plenty of upside for the JAK inhibitor despite that setback fall. A chunk of its predicted $2 billion in the next few years will likely come from graft versus host disease, a non-cancer indication. AbV and Roch's Venclexta is a first-in-class BCL2 inhibitor that made its debut in 2016 in the U.S. for the treatment of patients with relapsed chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, caused by a particular genetic mutation, the mutation which results in the loss of a tumor suppressor gene called 17-PIS, seen in around 10% of all CLL cases and is associated with a particularly poor prognosis. Rock's third biggest product, Rituxin, celebrates its 20th anniversary this year after debuting in 1997 in Switzerland and reaching the U.S. market the following year. The majority of sales for Rituxin are thought to come from oncology indications, although it is also approved for rheumatoid arthritis and organ rejection.